Computers are so smart. I'm learning. If it weren't for spell check, I would have misspellings all over my documents. Spell check not only tells you when a word is not in the vocabulary, but it also gives you suggestions for the correct spelling of the word. We shouldn't take this for granted. It's truly incredible. But how does spell check work? Computers are able to quantify the distance between words. When a word is not in the given dictionary or vocabulary, the spell checker will suggest the words with the smallest distance. That seems like an abstract idea. How does one measure the distance between two words? Well, here's one simple way to do this. When we need to correct the spelling of a word, every letter deletion will count as one. Every letter addition will count as one. And every letter substitution will count as two. But really a substitution is just a deletion and an insertion combined, so you can pretty much ignore that for the sake of simplicity. This distance will be calculated really fast by computers using an algorithm called the Minimum Edit Distance Algorithm. It will calculate the minimum number of edits to transform one word into another. Let's learn how to implement this algorithm in Python. We are going to be working in a Jupyter Notebook, so let's give ourselves some space to work with here. We will write a function that calculates the distance between any two given words. One word we will call the target, and the other word we will call the source. The way this algorithm will work is by formatting a matrix or array. Each letter in the target will be a column, and each letter in the source will be a row. In each entry of the array, we will calculate the minimum distance between the substrings. So this very last entry will be the minimum distance between our two words. It may seem odd trying to calculate all the distances between the substrings, but trust me, you'll see how this allows you to get the total minimum distance very fast. Since we are using an array in this algorithm, we need the NumPy package. So we'll import NumPy as NP. Let's define our function. Define min ed dis with a target and source as parameters. Of course, mid ed dist stands for minimum edit distance. The target word is the correct word. And the source word is the written word. Both words have a placeholder, the pound key or hashtag, whatever you want to call it. That character will be a placeholder at the beginning of each string. I'll explain more about what this means a little bit later on. The first step is to build an empty matrix of the correct size. Remember, the target is the number of columns and the source is the number of rows. Let's create a list of the target string where every entry is a single letter. Target is equal to a list of K for K in target. We will do the same thing with the source word. Now that we have broken the words into strings of letters, Let's create an array of zeros based on their size. Sol is np.zeros of size length of source and length of target. Sol, of course, is short for solution. Now let's talk about how to fill in the empty values of this array. Let's do a basic example. Our target string is b, c, d, e, and our source string is d, b, each with the first character as our holder value, hashtag, or the pound key. The first entry compares the hashtag to the hashtag. Since no additions or substitutions need to be made, that first entry is zero. That is the reason we have that placeholder value there, so that that spot is guaranteed to be zero every time. Make sense? Now let's move across the top row, comparing the pound key in the source to pound B in the target. Requires the addition of a B character, so that will be a one. Next, we compare the pound in the source to pound BC in the target. We are adding B and C this time to make them match, so 1 plus 1 is 2. The same follows for the rest of the row. At each step, we have to add another character to the source to get it to match the target. Now that the top row is done, let's go down the column. Comparing hashtag D in the source to hashtag in the target requires we delete the letter D in the source to make it match the target. So that gives us a one. And as you might've guessed, the next entry in that column will be a two since we have to delete the D and the E to get the source to match the target. I hope you see a pattern here. The top row will always count from zero to the length of the target. 
and the first column will always count from zero to the length of the source. This will always be the case thanks to our hashtag anchor key. So let's add this step to our program. The first row and column, so sole at row zero is equal to J for each J in range zero to the length of target and sole of colon comma zero, or the first column, is j for each j in the range zero to the length of the source. Excellent, now let's fill in the inner part of our array. Based on our little example, we are comparing hashtag d in the source to hashtag b in the target. This will require a substitution of the letter d with the letter b. In other words, we will delete the d from the source, which is gonna be a plus one, then add the e to the source, so plus another one. That gives us a two. In this spot, if the letters are the same, it is 0, and if they are not the same, it is 2 because it would require a substitution. So since B and D are not the same, we put a 2 there. Let's put this part in our code. Add an anchor value. If the second target letter is not the same as the second source letter, then we say sol at 1 comma 1 is equal to 2. If not, it just stays at 0. Now, we could continue filling in each spot just like we did before, but I'm going to show you a pattern that will make this so much faster. Here's the secret. If the two letters you're looking at are different, then take the minimum of the value of one above and one to the left and add one. If they're the same, then just copy the value that's up one and over to the left. Don't worry, I'll show you what this looks like. Let's look more closely at this two. When the two letters are different, so in this case B and D, I want you to pay attention to the number directly above and to the left of two. So these two ones. We take the minimum of those two values and add one. So the minimum of one and one is just a one, and we add one to get two. Let's look at the three now. Because C and D are different characters, let's look at the values one above and one to the left. The minimum of two and two is two, plus one gives us three. So that is why we have a three in that entry. This works every time the letters in the source are different from the letters in the target. But what about the other case, where the letters in the source and the letter in the target are the same? Well, that's the case with this one. We have a D and a D. Well, if you think about it, since these two letters are the same, we don't need to do an addition or subtraction. Both are already a D. Therefore, this does not add any distance. We simply copy the value that is diagonal to it. So that would be two in this case. Last, let's do one more. Let's look at this three. Because D and E are not the same, we look to the two values. So we take the minimum of two and four, which is two, and then we add one to get three. That is why we have a three in that spot. That's the secret to filling in this array. If the letters are different, take the minimum of those two numbers and add one. If the letters are the same, just copy the one diagonal above. The last value in your array is guaranteed to be the minimum edit distance between your entire strings. Let's see if that's actually the case. If we remove B and C from our target, we will get our source. That is two steps. Or if we add B and C to our source, we get our target, which is also two steps. Either way you look at it, the distance between these two strings is two. Let's do this step in our Python function to fill in the rest of the NumPy array. We need to go through every entry, so through every column. For C, in range one to the length of target, of course we're skipping the zero with row because we already filled that part in. Now through every row, for R in one through the length of source, again, we have already done the zero with row. So inside this double for loop, if the letter in the current column is not the same as the letter in the current row, then our solution at that row and column is equal to the minimum of the value above, so row minus one, but the same column, and the value to the left, so the same row, but column minus one, plus one. If they are the same letter, we write else, and we say that our solution at that spot is just the value up one and to the left, so row minus one, to get up one, and column minus one to get left one. Last, we return our array soul. That is all the code we need. Let's run this function to make sure it's working properly. So let's run all of our code. 
just with shift enter and let's call the mid edit distance function that we just created. The first example we'll do just like we were doing this entire time with our baby example BCDE versus DE and of course that's two. This should look very familiar. Let's go ahead and copy that. Now let's try piano with piano which is what I was doing at the beginning in Word and that of course is two because you replace that O with an A. Next, let's do a different example. Let's say ABC versus DEF. None of those letters are the same, so you get a six because you have to delete all three of them and replace three more. Now let's do test versus TSET, which is an interesting case, which will also be two because you have to get rid of the S in the source and then put it back in in between the E and the T. So that's why that's a two. And last, let's do an example where the spellings are the exact same. So they both are the correct spelling. So correct and correct. And this big gigantic array you see here, of course, ends with a zero because both words are spelt the exact same way. So that is how you can get the distance between any two words. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please click subscribe. Here are two other videos that I think you'll enjoy.